It's your boy Porter Flacco. Anywhere you go, anybody you know somebody gotta know me. And we're back again with another one, folks. Now check it out, man. So uh listen, man, the mystery regarding who Trula Mafia is is crazy, right? So I decided I'm gonna go back in time and try, try to truly understand exactly who Trula Mafia is and their history. So I found a video about hip hop daily, and we're gonna get into it, man. Let go. The Memphis rap scene has been on fire lately. Rappers like Money Bag Yo. Pooh Shiesty and Big Scar have been doing major numbers and representing the city on a national level. Part of what makes the music so raw is the authentic culture of the city and the real stories that inspire its rappers' bars. Them boys really be sliding. I'm just <laughs> Them boys really be sliding. That's a fact. Including shootouts, car thefts, and murders. Big Scar is one of Memphis' most promising new talents, and he's been making waves in the game ever since he signed to Gucci Mane's 1017 label back in 2020. But like most hot up and coming rappers today, behind the scenes, Big Scar is involved in the deadly gang war that inspires his music. Here's a look at the wild beef between Big Scar's Double R Gang and their rival crew, True La Mafia. Big Scar is from South Memphis. Growing up, the rapper said his block was like any other hood in America and there was a lot of killing, robbing, Dope selling and struggling. God damn! On my side, it's a regular hood, you know, stuff. Killing, robbing, dope selling, struggling. Look at how casually he says that. Yo, this right here just kind of shows how programmed our community is, bro. Like, look, first off, he's smiling. And then look at how casually he says that. Killing, robbing, dope selling, struggling. The rapper is affiliated with the Grape Street Crips, a gang that started in California, but eventually spread to Memphis. Memphis is a major hub for gang activity with over 180 active sets in the city, including Bloods, Crips, GDs, Black P-Stones, another one, Vice Lords, and a bunch of smaller neighborhood sets. Big Scar reps the Grape Street Crips, as well as his own gang, Double R. The rapper says, he jumped off the porch at 15 and dropped out of school in the 10th grade. It's like that the same thing, right? So, 7th grade is 13. 8th grade is, no, okay. ninth grade is 15. Okay, yeah, that's true. Stupid. He was raised mainly by his grandma, who died right around the time he started gangbanging. After that, he moved in with his pops, who taught him how to survive in the streets. He told Dirty Glove Bath in an interview that he did almost everything you could do in the streets so there's nothing left for him to do except take over the rap game. At 16, he was involved in a bad car accident. He tried to speed through a traffic light that was about to turn red. The car coming from the other direction tried to do the same thing and they both slammed into each other. Big Scar was sent flying through the windshield of the car and spent the next four or five days. Like his whole life is filled with like once in a million occurrences, right? Just surviving this car crash is once in a million occurrence, right? And then also to his rap career is a once in a million occurrence. He actually got on because a YouTuber, I think it's like Tommy or something like that, reacted to his video when it had zero views, right? However, the YouTuber was doing that, right? He had like a million sub or so, and he would react to like music videos with zero views. So that's how he got on, right? It's the same YouTuber who did it for Low Loaded as well. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. Something. We don't care. Recovering in the hospital, the crash left some scarring on the side of his face, which is how he earned his nickname, Big Scar. Early on, Big Scar would be cool with another clique called True La Mafia. But like many other large neighborhood gangs, internal tensions and personal beef between members would lead to a split. Yeah. Big Scar would leave True La Mafia to form another crew called Double R, which stands for Rich and Reckless. Yo, I ain't, listen, Big Scar comes off as like the class joker, the class clown. I wouldn't expect for him to be a stepper, yet alone the head honcho who started a gang, okay. With some of his partners, who were also Grape Street Crips. The other main members of Double R include Baby K, Kato 2X, and Team. Even though they were once cool, the split ruined the relationship between Double R and True La Mafia. But it wasn't until the murder of a Double R affiliate named BG that the beef would turn into an all-out war. BG got into it with one of Trula Mafia's most respected hitters, C-Mode. 
Nah, son. You nah, nah, son. <laughs> nah, son. First off, look at this musty ninja here, bro. Uh, bro, put this down. But you can't tell me that this was the king of stepping. That this high yellow fella, that he really meant business for real. Yo, Memphis is. <laughs> yo, Memphis is different. Yo, you telling me even the light skin ninjas is putting in work? C mode was the younger brother of Damo Trula, who was also well respected in the streets. He came up with dudes like Jay Mula, Zay, and Go Crazy, and together the crew would run the streets of Memphis. C mode and BG hated each other and would send shots back and forth on social media. Both of them were really about that life, so it was only a matter of time before someone got taken out. BG would be the one who ended up losing his life. And the word on the streets was that C Mode, Zay, and Go Crazy were the killers. The cops would later arrest Go Crazy for BG's murder, proving that the rumors were likely true. The cops believe that BG was in a car with three of his friends and stopped at a red light when True La Mafia got the drop on him and took him out. The shooter also hit the front seat passenger, leaving him critically injured. Go Crazy would later confess to the shooting, but didn't snitch on his homies. He was hit with first degree murder, three counts of attempted murder, aggravated assault, and use of a firearm in the Shit, bro. <laughs> listen up, bro. I just got listen, I just got a hit first degree murder and I'm snitching. What? They try to send this boy back to the gulags, bro. First degree murder, aggravated assault, robbery. What? Yo, yo, just tell me first degree and I'm riding, bro. Simple. In the commission of a dangerous felony. For admitting to his part in the murder. Even though Go Crazy kept it solid, BG's murder would lead to more problems in the streets. BG was cool with Big Scar, and Double R would take this murder personally, sparking the war with True La Mafia. It wouldn't take long for the gang to seek revenge, and right after BG was killed, Zay would get hit in retaliation. C Mode was locked up in Juvie, fighting a different charge when Zay was killed. Juvie? As an under 18? Spinning blocks like this under 18? Nah, son. Wait. Caught a murder. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Suspected of a murder. In jail for another crime. Multiple shooting spinning blocks under 18 years old? And the murder hit him hard. Zay was his right hand man, and they ran the streets together. With Go Crazy looking at some serious time and Zay dead, his whole gang was falling apart. So naturally, he began plotting his revenge and got to work as soon as he was released. Around the same time, Double R was recovering from the loss of one of their homies, 23, who was another victim of the Trula Mafia. 23 was the passenger in the car on the same night BG was killed and was the person who was badly injured but survived. The ops would catch up to him a second time around, shooting up his place at the Cane Creek. God dang. Yo, this guy's is vicious, yo. Bro, this is legit like, like Grand Theft Auto a war or some mission. Yo. Like, they injured him, came back and hunt him down. Bro, 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 this is like National Geographic, bro. This is, this is crazy, bro. Bro, bro. yo, listen, yo, this ninjaology is crazy, bro. I, how do these guys live like this? They survive. Well, the ops survive. You will think, like, you know what? Damn, yo, like, go crazy is in jail for murder, man. Yo, we should probably chill, bro. Right? He got caught once. But your man is in jail for murder for a crime that the other guy got injured in. And then you hunted that guy down just to make sure you finished the job? Yo, this is National Geographic, bro. These guys is, 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 is primates, yo. This is crazy. A second time around, shooting up his place at the Cane Creek Apartments, hitting both him and his dad. This time, he wouldn't be so lucky and passed away from his injuries. Then, in January 2020, see. Woo! Y'all know who this is, right? <laughs> Y'all know who this is, right? Mr. C. Uncio, bro. <laughs> Listen, yo. How long has CEO Bobby been a hooligan? How long has CEO Bobby been a hooligan? E mode, J Mula, and a dude named CEO Bobby of Ape Gang, a set that's part of Trula Mafia, would be arrested for a drive by shooting and charged with multiple felonies. Officers claim that they responded to shots being fired. 
between two vehicles on Shelby Drive around 2.30 p.m. A cop caught up with the blue Challenger that was involved in the shooting and it refused to pull over. The car ended up running several red lights before crashing. The three passengers then got out and ran but were eventually caught. Police also claim that they saw Jay Mula toss a backpack with weed and a gun in it behind a dumpster and two other guns were also found inside the car. C-Mode was already facing two charges at the time for aggravated robbery and Grand Theft Auto after the dude whose car he stole identified Murder, aggravated assault, now we're shooting, plus a Grand Theft Auto. How do they keep on getting out of jail? What? <laughs> Yo, hold up, bro. All under the age of 18 years old. Who keeps giving him bail? Fight him in the lineup. So, the charges against C-Mode were just stacking up at this point, with the recent incident adding motor vehicle theft and evading arrest. While they were locked up, True La Mafia would mourn another death, although this time, it wasn't the ops that would even the score. They would lose one of their homies to suicide. A member of Trula Mafia named Trula Murder Brasi would pass away and it was rumored to be self-inflicted. His death would hit the gang hard. Trula Murder Brasi. <laughs> Especially because many of his homies were behind bars at the time and couldn't be there to help him. That death would be just another loss that would turn c -Mode's heart cold and force him to direct his rage at Double R. After being released from jail, c -Mode entered the rap game with his track Send a Hit where he takes several shots at his enemies. This caught the attention of Double R and after that, c -Mode was their main target. Not long after that, more Trula Mafia members would lose their lives. With Damn. Damn. Yo, Trula Mafia took out Young Dolph, man, but it was like, look, yo, yo, Double R was sliding tremendous. <laughs> I'm just, man, listen, man, hey, listen, I'm picking sides here, yo. Trula Mafia did take out Young Dolph, but Double R was sliding tremendous, yo. Brothers D Money and J Money being killed in separate shootings. CEO Jizzle from Double R will reveal what happened to them in the song Rich and Ruthless. On the track, he raps, if you diss on 23, swear to God it's gonna be R.I.P. You ain't hear what happened to the last dude got left on Trig Street. D-Money. In this bar, he's suggesting that D-Money got smoked for dissing 23 as he was murdered on Trig Street in Memphis. At the same time, Double R was also gaining some traction in the music industry. Although early on, Baby K was the main rapper in the group, he would eventually convince his homie, Big Scar, to pick up the mic. Big Scar was more focused on the streets at the time, but decided to give rap a try. He blew up almost immediately, with his debut single, Make a Play, going viral. The video for the song was picked up by popular Polish YouTuber, Tommy Craze, the same guy who discovered Lil Loaded. Yes, he does a segment on his YouTube show where he reviews music that doesn't have a lot of plays. He came across Make a Play by Big Scar and gave it a cosign, which led to the track blowing up. This caught the attention of none other than Gucci Mane, and not long after, Big Scar flew to Atlanta and signed to 1017 record labels. Yo, and that's why, like, legit, all of Gucci Mane artists are currently behind bars. Uh, bro, <laughs> this man seen a hooligan and said, yup, 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 you fit the culture of my record label. It was a perfect fit because Gucci had already signed Big Scar's cousin, Pooh Shiesty, another big name from Memphis, and together they would take over the rap game as two of the hottest artists rapping 1017. But just as things were heating up for Big Scar, he would nearly lose his life to the streets. In 2020, the rapper was shot in the hip and had to undergo surgery. Because of the way he moved, the bullet went deeper into his body and hit his lung. He also had to have his appendix taken out and his leg put back into alignment because the bullet traveled up his spine. Luckily, he survived the shooting but had to be cut open. You got hit and the first thing you do is come on live and throw up hieroglyphics and like, like with your stomach being stuck. What? Yo, this, yo, bro. <laughs> yo, you can't make this up, yo, bro. Ninjas, man. Ninjas, bro. 
They're going to do a case study on ninjas in 100 years, yo. Which left another huge scar along his stomach. However, that didn't stop his hustle, and he got right back to the studio after being released from the hospital. He even shot a video for the song So Icy Boys with Pooh Shiesty and Fujiano, where he was bandaged up from the shooting and still recovering from his injuries. But in rap, you gotta stay competitive, and Big Scar wasn't about to give the ops the satisfaction of slowing down his bag. At this point, Big Scar had already lost two more of his double R homies, Bun Diesel and Dre Feezy, in a car accident. Even though he was blowing up in the industry, that didn't heal the pain of losing his friends, and it made things even worse when his ops from Trula Mafia was sending disses at his dead friends in their music and on social media. The constant. I mean, that's normal. That's normal ninja stuff. Bro, God, God, yo, how do you ninjas get a hold of these weapons? Yo, who's giving it to you guys, yo? Who's giving you guys this? Then payback and disrespect online made it hard for either side to just walk away and forget, so the war just continued. Around the same time, Jay Mula was released from jail for the car theft and shooting that got him locked up with C Mode and CEO Bobby. But being a high ranking member in True La Mafia, Double R was dead set on trying to catch him lacking, and not long after, rumors started to go around that Jay Mula was robbed and had his gun stolen. Kato 2X from Double R posted a photo on social media of a Draco with the caption underneath that read, Don't never make a song about me. Come get this Drake back in blood. The sub snitching is tremendous. Hashtag stamp that. He also posted a video where he called Jay Mula a ho and said he got beat up and had his strap taken. Jay Mula took to social media and denied the rumors, claiming that he gave away the Draco to one of his little homies because he didn't need it anymore. He also says that he already used the Draco to shoot at Double R. God! What? Yo, the self snitching is tremendous. So it doesn't even matter. We don't know which side of the story to believe, but it's clear that the beef was getting more serious as time went on. Then, in May 2020, Double R would catch a lucky break after their main op C mode got arrested and charged with a long list of felonies. Yo, this man said they will catch a break. <laughs> That's how you know this dude right here was sliding, yo. That's how you know this guy right here was sliding tremendous. He said they they caught a break. That might put him behind bars for a while. Word on the street is that Double R almost caught C mode lacking and got him hit two times. But being a stone cold killer, C mode immediately went for retaliation even though he was still out on bond from the other shooting. C-Mode would then take the social media and laugh off the assassination attempt while plotting to get payback. But after unsuccessfully shooting his enemies twice, he would be arrested and charged with one count of murder and seven counts of attempted murder. The murder charge was not related to the most recent shooting, but for the murder of BG. New evidence must have surfaced and the police were finally able to <laughs> New evidence must have surfaced. <laughs> oh, nah, son. So, nah, bro. Somebody told. Now, I know Go Crazy he wasn't telling. I know Go Crazy wasn't telling, man, but you play guilty and then all of. Man. I ain't going to cast no spurs, folks. Able to connect him to the hit. The cops also claim that C Mode attempted to shoot up the same house twice, trying to get double R. He opened fire on a home in the 5600 block of Myers Road where five people were inside. No one was hit the first time, so the rapper came back less than a week later and fired at two people standing on the front lawn, which makes seven attempted hits. Police were able to tie this shooting to the death of BG and determine that it was all related to the war between Trula Mafia and Double R. The cops were clearly looking to keep C-Mode off the streets. Bro, I never met an albino demon before. This is crazy. So no one else loses their life. But with so many bodies already dropped, it may be tough for either side to put the guns down. For in April 2021, which featured guest appearances from Gucci Mane, Pooh Shiesty, and Baby K. Hopefully, with their main op C mode behind bars, the beef will chill out long enough for Big Scar to blow up in the industry and force him to leave the streets alone. But all it takes is one more diss or another body dropped to further spark the war and put everyone's lives and freedom at risk once again.
If you thought this video was crazy, be sure to check out our channel for more. Alright, this is Hip Hop Daily, man. Definitely check him out. He does great work, man. Listen, man, um, if this video, I guess, educated you more on the, I guess, on the history of Trula Mafia, leave a comment and let me know, man. It's your boy, Portic Flacco. Anywhere you go, anybody, you know, somebody got to know me. So please like the video, sub to the channel. Don't forget, man, click that notification bell twice so you get notified when I drop 24-7. It's your boy, Portic Flacco. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.